welcome back to my channel sports fans okay let's get into this one right here yep i hear them now i hear them now youtubers are backpedaling well i wouldn't call it backpedaling but they're starting to wake up to something i've been saying i said nobody is watching this crap viewership as it at a, is at an all-time low excuse me <laughs> and furthermore let's keep going I think we're scared to keep going because I've been saying this that nobody has explained yet the viewership is at, is at an all-time low in the 2020s which begs the answer or the question how the hell are these guys making this kind of money 20 30 40 50 and 60 million dollars a year and getting record-breaking contracts well, nobody is watching this. Nobody is watching this sport on TV. And how are other networks buying the rights to the NBA and spending billions of dollars for something that nobody has been watching in the 2020s? Right? Not to mention, how are these players better in the 2020s? And nobody's watching these dudes. These dudes are the most skilled are the most athletic but nobody cares ah! and look we'll talk about this what really happened who really ruined the game but i heard nick right out there saying nonsense how they can fix the game how he's seen this coming when he uh i don't know if he talked to daryl morey or the question was posed to daryl morey back in the Houston Rocket days when they were shooting all the threes and Nick Wright made this thing about, you know, the Rockets shooting all these threes and it was bad for the game and um, just all this nonsense. And he kind of capped it off saying how they could fix the NBA and now that a, a dunk would be worth three and all the, the, the it was a cap on how many um, three-pointers you can shoot, right? And then they're worth one or some crazy stuff, another gimmick. And he said all this stuff so the game can get back to normal. This is not why the game is like it is today. And because of the Houston Rockets or because of, you know, the, 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 the Splash Brothers or Curry changed the game. This is a lie. And one of the gimmicks that they got going in the NBA today is so ridiculous. Check this out. Check this out. They have literally three tournaments in a season in the nba season they have three tournaments the in-season tournament the play-in tournament in the playoff tournament <laughs> Woo! so nick wright was questioning like he he, he seen this thing going like this for a while and no, bro, you've been telling us that these guys are faster, stronger, more skilled, all this than 80s and 90s players, right? It blew up in these guys' face. And this is another reason why the NBA is like it is because of Nick Wright, the Shannon Sharps, all this stuff that chose, that chose along with Adam Silver because best believe whatever they was debating or saying on these debate shows, it had to get approved by the NBA because Fox Sports and ESPN, they work for the NBA, right? So all the stuff that they were saying, this in past players, um, this in the league in the past, all that stuff blew up in their faces. It blew up in their faces. And let's understand why all this started, right? And why they had to start this in past players to carry this era or the LeBron era. Because look, guys, LeBron was supposed to be the next, right? And he was supposed to, you know, get the uh, torch passed from him from Kobe. And we talked about this earlier. What people don't realize is in 97, in 98, although um, Kobe Bryant was a bench player, right? All the media, if you listen to him, whether it was ESPN, anybody that was, you know, doing a play-by-play, -play, anytime Jordan and Kobe played in a regular season against each other, uh, from 97 to 98 or they played an all-star game against each other 
they was always talking about Jordan was passing the torch to Kobe. Kobe was the next. And this was right in Shaq's damn face. So while everybody's saying that Shaq carried Kobe because Shaq was dominant, again, dominant in three straight finals against no competition at the center position. Um, that's what they were saying back then. The torch was going to get past the Kobe, not Shaq, not Shaq, but Kobe. Now, eventually the torch was going to get passed to LeBron. The problem was we've never seen anybody really come out of high school in I can't think of anybody. Really. Maybe you can and be the face of the league. You guys got to remember, this guy was dunking and playing against academy school kids. And that's fine. He was in high school. But he wasn't playing against college level. The, the, listen, we told you before, when you're in high school, you're playing against the best of high school. Well, no, listen. When you're in the NBA, you're playing against the best of college players. When you're in college, you're playing against the best of high school players from around the nation. When you're in high school, who are you playing against? Maybe the best of state guys. If, you know, maybe you're doing state tournament. Other than that, you're doing like regional in high school right so for this guy to call himself the king coming into the nba that's ballsy right there that would never happen in the 80s and 90s right oh they would destroy this guy second of all he had no uh well we, we won't talk about his his overall game um coming into the nba because a lot of guys don't have a big overall game coming into the nba um it's just like that but what we will say is that lebron james Missed his first two years in the playoffs. Wasn't an all-star. So he wasn't living up to this king, uh, this king name tag, right? This king character, right? And by the time he got to 07, the stage was set. Okay, he didn't have to win. He's 22 years old. He's four years into the league. But for the NBA, this was something big. It was LeBron James against the big fundamental. Right, we know about uh, we we know about Tim Duncan. He basically had no flaws in his game. The game, the dude was flawless. Oh man, he can't shoot the three. This is what these idiots would say today. When we talk about skills, back in the past, we talk about position players. So at every position, you had to have um a po positional skill, right? So if you was at point guard, shooting guard, forward. Power forward center, you had to have a certain skill at all those positions. Shooting a three was not a skill at a power forward or a center position. You're being an idiot. This is why the game, nobody wants to watch it because it's a positionless game and just a whole bunch of guys running up and down the court. You want to make the NFL that? Everybody just take off on the offense like their receivers. The whole damn team. <laughs> this would be ridiculous. So, again, the big fundamental. Everybody knows Tim Duncan had no holes in his game. Against LeBron, right? Who's supposed to be this next Magic Johnson, this overall player and all this stuff. And he got to the finals in diarrhea all over the court. So, that right there was a bad look for the NBA. That was one of the worst finals meltdowns of, of any superstar in history when we look at the 22 points per game he shot like 35 percent from the field almost six turnovers 23 percent from three like 69 percent from the line it was just ridiculous right and the next year he did the same thing against this new super team boston he shot basically the same thing he yes he gave you a couple more points a game but he pretty much 39 percent from the field no it was like 38 percent from the field same shit, 20-something percent from three, 60-something percent from the line, five turnovers a game. It was the same thing. So this guy was just melting down like cheese all over the place. In um, 2009, we know what happened there. 2010, we know what happened there. And then we have the super team, right? So pretty much LeBron took the competitiveness with these super teams out of the league, right? In, in 2011. And fans started to leave because this will be like, this was supposed to be the guy taking the torch from Michael Jordan, right? Or if we look at it another way, if we watch Kobe lose, lose, and lose without Shaq, and then he teamed up with LeBron James, 
people will have no respect. And somebody else, Chris Bosch, people will have no respect for Kobe. Right? We would say those rings are fraudulent. But the only thing that kept people from, you know, walking completely away from the NBA is because the owners, the players, and the um the media said nothing about it. Said nothing about it. And they let it happen. This ain't something you let happen and you don't say nothing about it. So right then and there, the fans started to walk away, a lot of them. And they didn't like this guy. And now your new face of the league is what? What is he? He's a villain. You're not supposed to have a face of the league that is a villain. Michael Jordan won a villain. My, Magic Johnson won a villain. Now, some people might not like him because they're, they're, they're fans of other teams. But overall, they're the face of the league and they're going to carry themselves you know, with honor and integrity and all this stuff. It still showed the NBA, other NBA fans love, right? This ain't what LeBron James did. He was the new villain. And the losing continued. Two out of four in Miami with the super team. So it, the guy is so awful that he couldn't even win, win at least three championships with that super team. Melted down one time with that super team. Uh, got blown out by record margin. And still, they continue to support this guy who cheated the game and still couldn't get it done even when cheating the game. And then goes to Cleveland, does the same damn thing, and they welcome it. Not only that, they criticized Dan, Dan Gilbert for LeBron when, when um, Dan Gilbert crushed them for leaving the first time. And when he came back, they blamed instead of you know saying this super team thing is wrong for the second time, they start getting all over Dan Gilbert and saying that um, Dan Gilbert should be lucky LeBron is coming back. Ah! Yeah, that's what Stephen A. Smith said. And so. He goes over there, and we know what happens. He wins one. One. One out of four and gets blown out again by a record margin in 2018. Again. And barely wins that one. I don't care. No excuses. Who was hurt? Who did this? Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant built a super team after LeBron had already built two. So for Kevin Durant, this was the new thing to do. This is what you do. If the face of your league is doing this and the media is okay with it, the owners are okay with it, the fan, I mean, the um, players ain't pushing back, why not? This ain't a competitive league no more if the face of the league is doing it. This guy is getting swept. He's losing four ones with these super teams. Never seen a game seven in all the finals losses with a super team. <laughs> Blows 2-1 leads with these super teams. I mean, so so what now? What now? They 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 gotta keep supporting this guy. They they don't say that let's find the next face of the league. With him going to the Lakers? No. It was about what he's going to do. What he's not going to do. All this nonsense. Seriously. They kept going. Even though who won that championship that year? Was it Giannis? No, Toronto. Toronto won that championship. And it still was about this guy. So now, when he goes to the Lakers... Uh, basically, this game really changed in the 2020s. They really spread out the floor and made it just so childish, easy, it's not even funny. And then, you know, it, it was about 2016. We start hearing this GOAT debate, right? And for them to, um, when he beat, or when they beat themselves, when Golden State beat themselves, and now he's three and four in the finals, Right? And you got this guy in a GOAT debate, right? And by the time 2018 came and he lost those two, now he's three and six. This guy is an official loser. It was over. It was no GOAT debate after that. It was over. And they were still up his back butt crack about what this guy was going to do because he put up stats. Not that he could shut down Kevin Durant. 
and win one of them um series in 2017 it's about what this guy's gonna do next that's what it was about this guy's an all-time loser and he kept getting his butt whooped after he started super teams and people came in one of them do you guys realize that um this guy never won a championship without a super team do you guys realize all the, the players that have in this era that won without a super team? And when we're talking about super team, we're talking about going to play with other teams, number one franchise players. Or was number one franchise players of another team. So look, look at it. Look, look at it. Era. Tim Duncan won without a super team. All those guys were drafted over there. Um, Dirk won without a super team. Um, what what's his name? Uh, at least Curry won one without a super team, and two. Matter of fact, he won two without a super team. Joker won one without a super team. Um, who else? Of course, Kobe won back to back without a super team, without Shaq, and won three without a super team. If you count that three p. Uh, Joker, Giannis. I don't even the Celtics really is not a super team. Uh no. I, I won't count them as a super team. So all these players won without a super team, and this guy still the face of the league has had three, if you want to say four super teams, really, but he has not won a super team without a w, 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 uh, won a championship without a super team. But anyways, yeah, so they start making the league a joke. In the way they start making the league a joke was pretty much putting putting the blame on the guy that is a better basketball player than him a better shooter and you can say he's a better defender really this guy got like two steals titles right curry and they say curry changed the game curry didn't change no damn game curry was playing with clay they said the splash brother so if you went went for curry he would throw it to clay you come for clay he throwing to curry they want the whole damn golden state team out there shooting threes no, sir. Coming into the 2020s, everybody starts sitting on the perimeter. They changed this game so LeBron could keep playing. They don't want nobody in the lane, bro. They don't want nobody in the lane. And I just started to watch um, the Lakers when they was playing the Spurs. Man, this thing looked so rigged. Every time the offense would come down, whether it was the, the, the Lakers or the Spurs who had the ball, um, Wimby or... AD had to either start at the key or they had to start at the three-point line. They couldn't even go in the middle like a center. So they, they, they destroyed this game and they've only focused on one guy. A loser. You focus on winners, not losers, winners. Now you want to invite all these international players over here. Now you got to deal with it. Now they have to carry the NBA, right? Right, you 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 brought all these international players over here to be be top five players. Now what's going on now? You saw what happened with baseball. They brought in all these international players, kicked all the black players out, kept a, a handful of white players, and now what happened? They fell off the map because they can't carry the game. They're not American culture people. They're not here to get in trouble or be defiant, and that's fine with me. Those, those international players in, in baseball, the Latinos are here for a better life. So, so now you have this dilemma. Not only is it a three-point contest, the fan base doesn't really appeal or the international players don't appeal to the fan base, to the American fan base. And I'm going to tell you guys a secret. The advertising in the 80s and 90s, even, you know, some 2000s too, was off the chain in the United States for the NBA. The way they advertised guys was off the chain. These guys were superstars. Even, even if they wasn't, they said, take a guy like Muggsy Bogues. Muggsy Bogues, more famous than Joker is today. I'm serious. Muggsy Bogues. Because he was known for something. He was known for being that little, that gritty, that committed, everything. Muggsy Bogues. Remember, he was in, um, well, I forget what it's called, the Michael Jordan uh, movie. Muggsy Bogues. 
more famous than Joker is today. Uh, Bugsy Bowes was back then. It's just the reality of it, man. Penny Hardaway on commercials. Grant Hill on commercials. Larry Johnson on commercials. Shaq on commercials. You know, Kobe on these Even LeBron in, his, in, in the early 2000s. Real good commercials. The advertisement for the NBA for these players really ain't there. Where's SGA on commercials? I, I really, it, I mean, I'm sure he's got some, but are they memorable? Joker's commercials, memorable? Joel Embiid's commercials, memorable? No! So we got to come to the grips, man. I, I'm going to get off here in a minute. But we're going to have to come to the grips that LeBron James chased a lot of fan base away. They've been advertising a loser. A guy with no one, just from the eyes, can't shoot the mid-range consistently, can't shoot the three consistently, can't give you no paint work, ain't Magic Johnson or Chris Paul or Steve Nash or John Stockton or Jason Kidd. They try to lie. You don't see none of this guy running no offense and running the break and going through traffic. You don't see it, bro. But they call this guy floor general. He really don't have no positional skills. He's just a big ass dude running over people. This isn't the beauty that we saw in the 80s, the 90s from star players. You rather watch Dominique Wilkins than LeBron James? How about Penny Hardaway? How about that? You rather watch some of these centers than watch LeBron? Give me Shaq. Give me Hakeem. Give me Ewing. These guys could get fancy with some damn moves. Give me Scottie Pippen. Ain't nothing really beautiful about LeBron's game. He can barrel to the bat. That shit gets old against nobody. No resistance. Skinny three-point shooters. And he still got a stiff arm and elbow his way down the damn lane to get a damn shot off. So, yeah, we're going to have to come to the grips that, that, that what they're saying for a long time, um, it doesn't add up. Nobody's watching this crap. So how could they be making this money? The only way they could be making this money, like they've been making, at least since the 2020s, is that the owners would have to be taking a loss. That's the only way. Because they're paying, they're paying the WNBA, and they're not, they're not making a profit. And I'm not trying to say the NBA isn't making a profit, but what? Like Sports and Fitness Rand says, who the hell is wearing LeBron shoes? Nobody sees, nobody really wearing LeBron jerseys. When I was growing up, and none of these players. Oh, when I was growing up, you could go anywhere. And they wasn't just wearing Michael Jordan's jersey. You could see Larry Johnson, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, Larry Bird, Magic, all these jerseys. Whether in school, in the park, in the mall, dudes walking down the street. Um, a, a, a Kareem Abdul Jabbar jersey, all these dudes. Give me a break. I don't see this today, man. And, and another big reason why the, the viewership is so low is because of LeBron James fans. They're idiots. They will be on social media trying to challenge you about this and this and that and that and this, and they don't even watch the game, man. They wake up and they look at stats because they know this shit is not interesting. They don't want to watch it. But they will tell you about some damn stats that some player did the night before. But they don't want to tell you he did all these stats because there's no defense. And that's another thing is people ain't stupid, man. People looking at these players and they're scoring all these points and there's no defense. There's nobody under the, the, the rim to challenge a rebound. Everybody's just out there like a, I don't know what you call it. It's like a pickup game. There's no, I told you guys, there's no way these guys can be real coaches. If everybody's running the same play on offense, then everybody's running the same play on defense. Not to mention, go, go watch an 80s game in a 90s game and watch these coaches. They're about to blow like a damn kettle. They're so competitive. And they want to win. They're screaming at players, scolding players, especially in the 80s. 
you see that today? These guys, these 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 coaches don't scream at no players. Coaches will scream at you while you was on the damn court, and when you came back to the damn bench. You know why they don't do it today? Because these ain't real coaches, folks. Everybody run the same play on offense. How do you get mad? This ain't the Princeton, the Triangle, none of that. Just players doing what they want to do. They don't call carry and travel and travel and carry. We, we talked about this before. So if you're a ref and this is your job to, to, to see if they're you know, playing by the rules and you don't enforce the rules and all the fans are screaming travel and carry in the stands and you don't call carry in the traveling, then guess what? It, it's not a real sports league. And the fact is, if they call carry and travel, it's going to expose these guys to being these skilled players and being these good players, right? They don't even have defense today, and these guys are still carrying and traveling down the court. But if they called it, it would expose these guys of not being as good as what we've been told. And therefore, you'd be scratching your head. Well, how are these guys making um, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 million a year if they're not even that good? Well, folks, <laughs> I don't think they make this kind of money. Ask them why they're podcasting, got to put on makeup and have jobs after they retire, all this stuff. I don't think they're making this money. And I think this is why they're starting to, you know, not want to play because they're really not making this money. I think that, you know, I've always been saying this for a long time. They're just saying this so they can keep charging the fans this amount of money for popcorn, tickets, hot dogs, all this stuff. That's it. LeBron James is supposed to be a billionaire and he's still running the court for what? Again, people, I'm going to ask you, you retire from your job after all these years. You got hundreds of thousands in the bank, pension, 401k, Social Security. And then you just go back to work. <laughs> Something ain't right, folks. Something ain't right. So they're going to have to get rid of this commissioner and get rid of LeBron James because everybody is exhausted about this guy there's nothing interesting about this guy his game his you know when he talks he talks like an idiot um th there's nothing really interesting about this guy and there really has never been never since he came out of high school never he never took the challenge like kobe he never got the torch passed to him he, he's not tim duncan where he don't have any flaws in his game nothing and that's why they didn't like kobe because kobe had game so Kobe didn't have to be the NBA's puppet um, to, f for, to be honored as a great player. Everybody's seen that. LeBron has to be the NBA. In order for you guys to think this guy is this good, it has to be told by the media. That's it. The media, let's be serious, the media controls the NBA. And LeBron James is their puppet. But it, 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 that's what they sell the NBA on him. But it's not based on winning. It's not based on having any, you know, overall talent at his position. Can't shoot threes. Can't shoot the mid-range. Can't give you no post work. Can't shoot free throws. Ain't a team leader. Can't take, you know, a non-super team and win championships. None of this. And then they have to start dissing other past players and their past product. That, that's some of the stuff that destroyed the game, Nick, right? You. For you to have a job. You had to destroy the NBA and chase real fans away and give us an excuse why nobody's watching this trash. Don't don't backpedal now. You're the one that helped destroy the NBA with LeBron James and this new commissioner. And the only thing that's going to change it is when they get LeBron James out and they get this commissioner out and get back to playing basketball. That's it. This and white players. Because like, what is this? Whoever would have thought. Tell me what you think.